thanks so much for uh, for having me and having us and allowing uh, allowing me to explain a little bit about uh, what be my eyes is and what we do um, I'm not sure that everyone knows exactly what we're all about but I would like to show a little video uh, in the beginning that that explains what we do uh, after that I'm gonna tell you about how it works all of the different components that is a part of Be My Eyes, and you also get some testimonials from both our blind and vision impaired users and and, uh, and some of our volunteers. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, um, to ask them. Uh, maybe I should run through the presentation first. Uh, I'll try to do that relatively quick, so we leave the majority of the time for your questions. Um, and. I would love to. I would like to thank you, Michael, for for sharing your uh, your, your your recent experience uh, with Be My setting up this call. Uh, I'm really happy, and I hope that that uh, that uh, one of our volunteers was uh, was able to to help you. Um, but I'd like to start off by showing a short video. Uh, the audio is pretty good on it, so if you are blind or vision impaired, it should work. Otherwise, I'm happy to explain a little bit further. You might wonder how blind people deal with everyday challenges. Well, normally the answer is simple. We're not that different from you. We play music. We go to school. We go to work. You get the picture. But sometimes the simplest things can be difficult and we need a pair of eyes. Connect to. That's where you come in. Establishing video connection. Through your smartphone, Be My Eyes connects the blind with sighted people through a live video connection. Simply choose if you need help or want to help by the click of a button. That's a nice picture of you and your family, Caroline. Is this Lord Clifford? <laughs> yes, it's a photo from my parents. You can help just by installing the Be My Eyes app. Image. And we'll notify you when someone needs your help. And if you're in the middle of something, don't worry. Someone else will step in. <laughs> so, would you care to be my eyes? The Be My Eyes app. Find it in the App Store. So uh, I hope that this uh, gave a little bit of um, of background about to what we do. So Be My Eyes is is essentially um, it's a completely free mobile app. There's absolutely no cost involved in in downloading and using Be My Eyes. Um, we want. And, and this will never change. We want the, the service to be 100% free, and we want to let you know that you can use it as much as, possi as you possibly want. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of context for Be My Eyes and why it all started. So Be My Eyes is a, it's a, it's a Danish uh, um, idea. Our inventor, Hans Jan, he is he's Danish, and he is visually impaired himself. And he came up with the idea in 2013 uh, to see um, instead of calling someone we know, and this, instead of deciding who to bother using FaceTime or Skype, it would be great if we could have an app that will allow us uh, to connect directly to a, to a silent volunteer who then can explain what we see. Um, so this was how it all started. And then um, fast forward a little bit um, to January 2015, uh, where the app, app launched. Um, we had no idea how this would take off. We had no idea if people would like it, if people would use it, if any blind people would sign up, or if any volunteers would sign up. And and with our like humble backgrounds, we thought that okay, we launch it and then we start in in Denmark, and maybe after uh, three months we can move into uh, and I should say that Denmark is a is a country of five million people, so it's really tiny. 
So you said, maybe we can start there and maybe after three months we can move into Sweden and maybe after half a year we can move into Germany. Uh, but in fact, in the first 24 hours, the app was downloaded uh, uh, 10,000 times and we were in 30 different countries. So the expansion kind of blew up in our hands a little bit um, and since then the community has grown and grown and grown. Um, the way that it works is that you as a blind person, you open the app and there's basically one button. It's super, super simple to use. It says connect to first available helper. When you press that button, you will be connected to a, a, a sighted volunteer. And the sighted volunteer, um, let's say that you are in, the way that we match is based on language and on time zone. So if you are in Hong Kong and you speak English and you need help in the middle of the night, then we will not call someone in your time zone. We will call someone, maybe in one in the, someone in the U.S. and so someone in in the U.K. who speaks your language and who um, and and who can um, and, and, and who is available. Our our response time is now down to uh, in English. It's down to nine and a half seconds from when you press "I need help" to you get it. Uh, and our global average is 30, uh, uh, just around 30 seconds. And today we are able to help in 95 different languages. So basically, no matter what language you speak, there will always be a, a volunteer ready to, to help and assist. Um, BMIS essentially consists of two things. On one side, we have the community that, and the community consists of blind people on one side and sighted volunteers on the other. Uh, and sometimes it's a little bit hard to, for us to figure out who do we help the most. Um, we, I'm just going to read out a little tweet uh, that, that, um, that shows uh, the impact and the happiness that it brings to the volunteers whenever they get a call. So it reads, just got my first Be My Eyes request. A man from Iraq needed help identifying his health slash birth documents. I feel so fulfilled I could cry. And I think that this is something that we see all the time. Uh, every day we get tweets or emails like this from the volunteers who are just so happy and eager to help. In fact, whenever we get a bad review uh, in the app store, it's from a sighted helper who didn't get a call. So <laughs> we are, uh, and this is because we, we I'll come into the, I'll dig into this a little deeper in a, in a, in a minute. Um, but uh, we are lucky to have a huge amount of uh, silent volunteers. So we are really on a mission to let you know that BMI, you can use BMIs a hundred times a day if you want to. You will never disturb anyone. You will never disturb the same one. Everything is completely free and everything is completely anonymous. On the other side of the BMIs, we have the technology. And, and that is really special because we because of our matching algorithm and and the reliability of the app. If you have, if you if you tried the app if, uh, when we launched, a lot have happened since then. So if uh, if you're running on a on a old version, I highly suggest you to to update it to make sure that you have the best possible experience. So this technology allows us to to connect super super quick and super reliable and to a sighted volunteer. As everyone knows, blindness is a huge, huge um, issue. Um, and according to the WHO, we, there's 285 million blind vision impaired people in the world. Of them, about uh, 30 to 40 million are living in high income, high income countries. And it's our goal to have uh, five a million blind and vision impaired users on our platform by 2020. Today, our community consists of 36,000 blind and vision impaired people and, and who are being supported by more than 520,000 sighted volunteers. This is a huge group of people, a huge group of people willing to, uh, to assist. Our users, they speak 95 different languages and they're based in 150 countries, which make, which allow us to uh, always to be able to connect to our silent volunteers. There will always be someone available for you. Um, 
So it's just about uh, just about using it. When we launched it, we thought that BMIS would be used for a task like seeing the expiry date of your milk, for example, but distinguishing between uh, canned foods or between colors. Some some of the some of the task some of these tasks we still see that they they are they are a lot of what people use it for. But some of the users share some really, really heartwarming stories about what they use BMIS for. Um, and and for example, now we have we have blind and vision impaired parents who are now now able to make homework with their kids because usually the kids books doesn't have any braille feedback. So the, the blind parents are connected to a volunteer who will, who will then explain the math, uh, uh, the math, the math problems or the the, the grammar uh, sentences that the kids are solving. Um, and we even like a few months ago, we even got a we even got a, a tweet from one of our sighted volunteers who said who who said that technology is awesome. It's started off the day helping a blind couple in England reading the pregnancy test results. And when we heard that, we our hearts dropped, and we were really, really um, excited and happy to see what BMIS is being used for. And we we work a lot with blind organizations, and we, we told them about this story, and then they said, "Do you know what this is? This is privacy at a level that was not uh, possible for." For a blind person before, before uh, be my eyes, you would have to reach out to your friends, or you would have to reach out to your family to get the answers to some of the the, the very personal questions. Uh, and with be my eyes, this is now a possibility. So we're really proud of of, of that. Um, we even had one of our we even had one of our our users who saw her son's first basketball game through the eyes of a volunteer who narrated the whole game. So it's, we really see that it's being used for big and small things, and uh, I would like to say that there are no tasks too big and no tasks too small. Uh, feel free to use it to for whatever you want. Of course, you should. I mean, BMIS is it's based on volunteers, so it's important that you don't use it to check, check your uh, online banking or anything involving your personal information, like credit cards or like um, um, passports, social security numbers, and all of that stuff. Don't do that, but Distinguishing between colors, canned foods, reading labels, uh, technical issues, feel free to use it. Um, I'd like to sh um, share a little um, a little story about one of our volunteers uh, who has, who says a few words about what it means to be a BMIS volunteer. Hi, my name is Sean Ryder. I'm a professor at Seattle University. I use Be My Eyes because it's a way that I can make a direct impact on the lives of others and helping uh, blind and visually impaired people through Be My Eyes is one of the most satisfying things I've ever done. So I signed up to Be My Eyes uh, specifically to try to help people. Uh, I, I had a aunt who was visually impaired and I always um, helped her out finding solutions, uh, different ways that she can, she could still engage with media or technology, um, everything from audiobooks to, you know, magnifiers on her computer. And uh, she had an iPhone um, and passed away uh, before Be My Eyes became available, but I know that that's the kind of thing that she would love. And so when I first saw it, I understood very clearly that that was a tool that um, that I could use to basically do the same thing that I've been doing, um, you know, face to face, but but possibly for a lot of other folks who need it. And so, um, so I I signed up and eagerly awaited <laughs> my first call. And I think it took over a month to get a call. And um, and then I did, and it was super exciting and over in a flash. And it was incredibly easy um, to help out, but it seemed just so profound, it really affected me. And ever since then, I've just made sure that Be My Eyes is always running, and um, and I, 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 you know, have gotten calls every month or so, pretty much. When I get a call on Be My Eyes, I feel, first of all, like I have to immediately react because I feel like it's a competition 
to answer the call as fast as possible because I know that there's other people out there who are also having their phones buzz and um, and I really want to get those calls. I know that it's um, it's very rare to get a call in the first place and a couple of times I've missed calls where I, I haven't been quite, um, you know, I've been on the road or I've been sitting in an in a audience or something and I haven't been able to get out um, to get the call right away and every time I miss a call, I feel terrible. Um, so I typically answer the call right away, even if I'm walking to a better place to talk. It's, it's like trying to win the prize, you know. I've never had anybody ask me anything that I felt like, oh, that wasn't worth my time, you know, um, or where I felt like uh, it, they took too much time. Um, most calls are very short anyways. Most people call with a, a fairly specific task. Uh, and then once that's complete and, and because of the nature of the, you know, they need help with seeing things. And that's something that doesn't take me any time. It's, um, it's something that I'm very happy to do and, uh, to read a label or to let you know, um, which color, which item is, or something like that is, is not a problem. And again, you know, it just feels so good to, to hear people on the other side, say thank you and, and be excited that they got this information and to know that, um, you know, you just contributed to somebody else having a better day. And that that's, it's a beautiful thing. I've gotten calls. I got a call once where a fellow was just curious about a person who is marching up and down the street outside of, um, where he was with a sign and wanted to know what that was. And that was one of the longer calls that I had because it was fairly difficult to get the camera sort of aimed and focused in a way that I could make out exactly what was going on. But even there, that was like a real connection that I felt like I had with somebody. And, um, and that person was worried about something and I was able to really easily help them understand the situation uh, that was going on. And then hopefully they were able to take that information and, and do something useful with it. But, um, but it was uh, an unusual situation. Most of the time, people just want help reading a label or um, telling um, you know, the difference in color between two items or, or something like that. And those are tasks that go so quickly. Um, you know, it's, it's not any problem at all to, to take a moment out of my day and, and help out with something like that. So that, so that is a story by, from from Sean who shares shares his uh, experience and uh, the and the joy that he finds in in using Be My Eyes. And um, one of the things that I didn't mention before is that uh, we we get we get quite a lot of questions about how long can I use it? Is there any limits to when I can use it or how long I can use it? Uh, and I'd just like to stress that there's we don't have any time limits. To how long a call can be, we we, uh, we we what we do is that if a call is uh, uh, close to uh, is one hour long, we'll ask you if you still want to talk. Uh, but we really see that some calls are 30 seconds long, some are a minute long, and some are 45 minutes long. It's it's really um, because the tasks are so are so different. Uh, but I think one thing that is uh, is a good thing to do if you have a task at hand that you know will take uh, a long time, then it's it's a, it's always a nice gesture to ask if they if they have the time to help out for that long, and if they don't, then no problem. You can just hang up and uh, call another one, and or you can break a lot of our users will also break the tasks into different um, into different calls if they are. Uh, they still want to sort out the whole wardrobe, then maybe they take the first uh, 10 items of clothes with one volunteer and then uh, talk to another volunteer if they, the first one doesn't have uh, so much time. But it's always nice just to, to, to check in and, uh, and ask. So absolutely no limits to how uh, long the course would be. Uh, you can call for an hour and it will still be completely free. Um, the app doesn't require any uh, it requires data, so basically the same as when you say using making a Skype call or a FaceTime call. And um, you don't have to be on a Wi-Fi; you can be out and about. Um, you can be at the bus stop, figuring out when the bus is leaving, and, and not being on 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 a Wi-Fi connection. It works perfectly fine with cellular connection as well. Um, not that I want to turn this into a, a, a 
a, a cinema experience, but uh, I have another short video from one of our uh, blind users uh, who tells about how she uses the app, and I think that uh, it will be interesting for you to hear um, her perspective on Be My Eyes. So there's a question uh, from Jessica who asks if it's for Android and iOS. Right now, it's only for iOS. We will launch the uh, Android version in about a month, and we know that we have been working. Uh, we have we know that we have been working on this for quite a while, um, and now it's it's almost ready. Uh, building an app like this is something that requires a lot of time and a lot of resources, but we are almost there, and we expect to launch uh, to launch the app uh, very soon. And you're not the only one asking for for it, Jessica. We have about fifty thousand people on the waiting list and for the Android version. So we're really, really excited to launch it, and it is top of our priority list. And Daniel is asking a question: Is how is the program funded if it's free? And we have we have received some some public grants, and we have some investors who have uh, have invested in Be My Eyes. And what's important for us is in terms of, because it is a business and we have to make some money somehow, some way, but uh, what we have decided is that we want to keep it completely free for the blind and vision impaired. We believe that accessibility should also be financially accessible. And um, we have users all over the world, also in, in, in places where, um, there's, where incomes can be pretty low. Um, so we have decided to say we're going to give the product away for free. We'll never charge the blind vision impaired any money for it. But what we'd like to do is to, uh, because we uh, we have developed some some really nice technology that can be used for other things, uh, not connecting a blind to a sighted, but maybe connecting a student to a teacher or a patient to a doctor. So we can license our technology, and that's the way that one of the ways that we we can we can keep it free. Stephen, did you get the the slide uh, to to work? Yep. Or the yep. video to work? Yep. I was just okay. waiting to pre answer those questions. Uh, one second here, and here we go. This is a story from Be My Eyes. Hello, my name is Victoria. I just turned 46. I was born in Argentina, and I've lived in four countries. Everything started when I was 26. I had my very first episode of optic neuritis, which is inflammation of the optic nerve. And eventually we found that it is neuromyelitis optica, which is also called Devix disease. I've been blind now for maybe like, I think it's been like a year and eight months, but never from moment one, I never took it as a bad thing. I'm driving through life in a different lane I've taken this experience to learn. Oh my God, what a master's degree on what's important in life. What a master's degree of perspective. Now I celebrate the fact that I can find number two on my elevator where the gym is. Six months ago, I decided to try to go to the gym on my building. I live on the 11th floor. And the gym is on number two. I went to the gym touching the walls. When I got to the gym, I had to touch the machines to remember where the treadmill was. For two weeks, I did that with tears coming. Sorry. Tears rolling down my eyes. I was able to turn on the treadmill. I felt so proud of me. I said, nothing's going to stop me. It's been hard taking away the independence. That's one of the many things that is very, very difficult. And it, I continue to be open, to be taught lessons, to be taught how strong I am. I never knew. Most limitations are in the mind. I say most because if you say, Victoria, drive a car now, of course I couldn't. But most limitations are only in the mind. 
I have been using Be My Eyes for, I would say, three to four months. And my experience has been unbelievable. And what I have seen is people want to be called, all the volunteers. Be My Eyes has improved my life so much. You would not believe what I do now with Be My Eyes. Because I used to be a declutter queen. I used to love to organize, but I always have to ask for help. I've done like eight cabinets with Be My Eyes. But what I do is I select, let's say, maximum five items. That would be five items at a time per volunteer. So I don't take too much of their time. And also, that way I can give somebody else the opportunity to give, which is so en so enriching. They say that you have more happiness when you're making somebody else happy. Sometimes I call a three in the morning and I get somebody in Australia. We talk about rugby. Also, it's fantastic. I love it. It has given me so much more independence, less asking of favors. And now I know that somebody that is happy on the or on the other end, happy to get my call. This was a story from Be My Eyes. If you liked it, please share and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great ways to use Be My Eyes. So, uh, so this was a story from uh, one of our users uh, who have started to use Be My Eyes and figured out uh, different ways of using it. Um, I thought I'd, I'd share that with you um, so you know what it can be used for. Um, and also, so you know that the the joy that you actually also bring to other to the volunteers by asking for some help. Um, Jessica, you just to ask about uh, our 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 if it was only on Android or on iOS. But our next steps, and um, there are two things on that. One is the Android version uh, that I uh, that I talked about and. And we are planning to roll that out really, really soon. If you have an Android device, you can go on to the, the www.bmiis.com slash Android, and you can sign up there to be notified when it's ready. And then we'll send you an email saying you can now download it in the Play Store. But what we're also doing is to that we what we're developing on the on, on the side is an enterprise solution. And what we mean by that is this is a piece of software that works not on a on a phone to a phone, but on from a browser to a browser. So if you need some some help, some help, uh, if you if you find a, a website that's inaccessible, then uh, we can do the same screen sharing. Uh, and if it's something like checking the bus, then you can be connected to a volunteer. But if it's purchasing something online, checking your taxes or whatever it can be, then we will connect you directly to the customer support center of that company. And this is a way that you can that you can use the internet uh, in, a, in a more smooth way and also in, in a way that where you can access previously inaccessible websites. So this is something that we are working on that we are super, super excited, super, super excited about. One of the reasons why we why we are having so much focus on building the Android and getting that ready is also because we know that there's a huge market, uh, in fact, in, in the developing world. In fact, 90% of the world's blind live in low-income settings. And in many of these places, places it's uh, buying a, an iPhone is something that's completely out of reach. So we really want to make the Android ready so it's, it's, uh, so it's possible to use the MIS on much more affordable um, devices. Uh, my, my, um, my presentation is, is basically coming to an end here. Uh, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about, about who we are as a team. Um, as of today, we are seven people working on being my eyes. So you can say that that's not quite a lot for, for almost 600,000 people, uh, but we have Kristen, who is the CEO, we have Hanshan, who is the founder and inventor, and he's also chairman of the board. He is blind himself. And then there's me. I'm the community director, and I take take care of uh, 
all of the communications and all of the partnerships. We love to partner up with brand organizations uh, to help spread the word, but also be to, to build solutions that are, uh, are much better. And then on the technical team, we have four really, really talented um, uh, developers. So who are all listening to, to the input that you give them. So if there's any features that you uh, would like to have implemented, or if there's something that you don't think is working the way that it should, or if you just have some good ideas, I highly encourage you to reach out. Um, and we will fix these things as soon as we can. And we have a long to-do list, but we really listen to our users. and all of the features that we have made and all of the improvements that we have made is based on the feedback that you have given us. Um, so we are really, really eager to hear uh, both how you think we can improve, but also if, there, if you face any, any like, um, technical issues or if, there is, uh, if you have any ideas of new features that we should develop. So please feel free to reach out if you have any, uh, any feedback for us. I think this is uh, actually it for me, uh, and I'd like to open up for, for, for questions if you have any. Thanks for your time. Oh, and we do have a question here. Are the volunteers uh, trained? If so, how? Perfect. Um, the volunteers, when they sign on, they get uh, some, some, ba some, some basic training in terms of they get some emails on how to be a good helper. Uh, and it is, we don't do like intense training for all of the volunteers, but what we do is that we try to equip them in the best possible way so they know how uh, uh, some of the questions that they may get, how can they provide the best possible help. We have, they, will, they will get emails about that and we're working on a new like onboarding video so, um, so, so, they, so they can provide a better help. But we see that I think the main trait what makes a good volunteer is really that, that they're patient uh, and that they are okay with uh, it, that it takes a little bit of time to get the camera and focus and all that. And, and I think that all of the volunteers, at least all of the videos that I have seen, uh, people are super, super friendly and are just eager to help. And it is just a, 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 a conversation with a, a friendly helper. And, and so, I don't know if I'm, if I'm answering your question completely, uh, but we try to equip them in the best possible way so they can provide the best possible help, but we don't do like in, in intensive training uh, programs with them. So, and yes, do you have a list of what they can and cannot discuss with persons? You, know, you mentioned banking and Yes, I have. A, um, so be nice. You can use that for for everything in terms of matching colors, for example, finding lost items, describing pictures or paintings, or matching uh, matching colors, reading labels on household products, shopping at the supermarket, uh, and as Michael did earlier, there's the computers. Uh, you can't really figure out how to use the computer. You're more than welcome to use uh, be nice for stuff like that. Uh, identifying exp expiration dates on, on foods and familiarizing yourself with new locations. It could be new host in a new in a hotel room. Figure out where are the plugs. Is it conditioner? Is it shampoo? All these kinds of things. Figure out if the lights is turned off or on in your apartment. Or and also finding uh, departure times on public transportation uh, and resolving uh, like any um, technical issue. But what you shouldn't use BMIS for is identifying credit cards or anything with your personal address or name on it. You, you, don't, you shouldn't use it to check your passport, for example, or you shouldn't use it for anything involving your social security numbers, your bank information, your insurance, and all of that. Uh, and, and also, it, like anything that can put you in danger, and basically, basically so like medicine and, and stuff like that, don't use BMIs for that, but for everything else, feel free. Okay. Well, if if there's no other questions, um, wow! I, I thank you, Alexander, for the um, the presentation. That was really it's really awesome that you guys are the work that you're doing there, and uh, especially it's kind of. I mean, I think uh, Emily had met met you originally, and she had talked about 
the fact that it was um, there's no cost to this app, which is just, it seems so unbelievable. So it's um, and it's such such a valuable thing, and you know, for for both for people that are um, blind and visually impaired, and also for people that are volunteering. So what a gift for both um, for everybody. So um, yeah, thank you so much for for taking the time um, to do this presentation for us, Alexander.